and go ahead, sir. Okay. Hi, everybody. I am Peter Laws, and 5 uwy I run SCARS exam sessions uh, along with a team of volunteer examiners uh, about, God, it's almost 40 years ago. It's 1984. Uh, the FCC wanted to get rid of everything. Um, Barry Goldwater, who was K7UGA, stepped in and said, well, maybe not everything. And they outsourced ham radio license testing to amateur radio operators uh, and changed the regulations to provide for uh, volunteer examiner coordinator groups. ARRL started one, ARRL VEC, a number of other groups started one. One of them was the Laurel Amateur Radio Club in Maryland, that's who we're affiliated with. Uh, and they coordinate volunteer examiners who have to be accredited. We have to know what the rules are, et cetera, et cetera. And we promise to do a good job and not cheat and all that stuff. And we've been doing that successfully for what is it, 1984. So that's what, 36 years now? Uh, it's been outsourced to the volunteers. Anyway, we, we've been running tests at SCARS for most of that time. Uh, I've been coordinating the session since 2009. Every month we test at the firehouse up on North Base here in Norman. Uh, for this class, we are going to run a special session on the 19th of December. We're actually going to, because of the stupid COVID stuff, uh, we're actually going to divide it into hour and a half long blocks starting at nine o'clock in the morning. Um, what you're going to need to do is a, as a student and as a candidate for a license, you're going to need to do two things. You need to going to need to get with the FCC and get an FCC registration number. We have a link to that. I already looked on the tech page, the class page. There's a there's a block mark test sign up. And if you go to that link right there, you can go there and it'll come up with a page like this. You need a username. So you'll want to register. You're going to give them your, your social security number. It's a secure site. You can see the little lock is locked there. Um, but that's to prevent having to give me the social security number, which in practice we don't do anyway. We require everybody to deal with the FCC directly, get your FRN and use that on all your paperwork. Once you have an FRN, you can do business with the FCC. That doesn't mean anything for amateurs because as of what time is it? 20 to seven, there is no fee for an amateur license. There is a rulemaking procedure winding its way through the commission right now that may see that change but don't worry about that for if if it happens it won't be till january or february that there that but there may actually be a fee for a license don't worry about that you'd still need the frn go to the fcc cores site as i said link on the the class page for test sign up make yourself an frn once you have that frn go to w5nor slash license. You'll come to this page and it has everything you ever wanted to know about getting licensed. At least everything I could think of anyway. On there, you'll find a list of the test dates. You will not see December 9th. Oh, we don't see December 3rd on there either. I'll get fix that. Uh, I'm not going to average. Oh, I did, but I screwed it up. Look at that. It's way up there. Uh, December 19th is yours. If you click on the register button, you'll get this. A couple little reminders. And then fill in these blanks, including your FRN number that you just got yourself. Select 1219. Select technician, fill in the rest. I'm going to guess none of you have unprocessed applications pending with the FCC, but you might. Uh, if you've ever been a felon, convicted of a felony, you need to check that. That does not disqualify you automatically from a license. Uh, but the FCC started collecting that information a couple years ago after having stopped for about 20 years. Uh, and then name, address, that sort of stuff. We take that information, bring it into our testing program that uh, lets us manage our sessions. Uh, from that on, it's all electronic. We will, after you have passed your test, which you all will pass because you're all studying and drilling on the test sites. Uh, once you do that, you will you know, we'll print out a 
application form, which you will sign, but we will submit the results of the license uh, exam electronically, uh, and it will be processed on the next business day. So we plan to test on the 19th, which is a Saturday. Uh, your licenses will post uh, first thing in the morning on Monday morning. So you'll have a call signed by Monday morning. And once you have that call sign in your hot little hands, uh, you'll be able to operate, assuming you have a radio. Uh, the FCC used to send out paper licenses. And in fact, in what, at one time uh, before, it's probably 2007, 2008, uh, the paper license was your, literally your ticket to operate. That was your license grant. They changed that and said, well, no, once your information is in the database, that constitutes your license grant. And since then, paper licenses have basically gone away. If you want one, I can send you the information on pulling one out of the FCC website. It's not a not a big deal, uh, but they don't routinely send you one. So once your call sign has been assigned and we'll, we'll send you some email to let you know what that is on the Monday morning, uh, you're, you're good to get on the air and operate. Um, <clears throat> any questions on the FRN part and the license testing part? Oh, I, oh wait, yeah. I have a question. Yes, what is it? Uh, on that Saturday, we plan to start at nine o'clock. We'll do uh, 9 a.m., 10.30, then 12.30, and then uh, two o'clock for the four sessions. Now, it depends entirely on how many people we have. If we end up only having you know, six people, we're probably going to be able to handle them all in the first session. But assuming we have more than that, we're going we're gonna to limit it to six people per session. Uh, in, when you do the, the registration, if you would rather do afternoon or later, put that in the comments. If you'd rather do earlier, put, put that in the comments. If you don't care, put that in the comments uh, and we'll assign you a test, uh, a session, a time to show up at the firehouse. Uh, the, just the instructions, does everybody know where North Base is in Norman? Yeah, you're all okay. And you know, there's a firehouse up there up on Goddard Avenue, 2207 Goddard. It's it's just by flood, actually, by the natural gas pumps there. Uh, that's where we test. There's a, an emergency operating center there, and there's a training room there, and we have use of the training room. So we'll be doing that there. Um, so we'll tell you what time to show up. Again, depends on how many people we actually have sign up for the test. Uh, we'll get that divided into to manageable groups. Um, okay, now I think I'm done with my own questions. Do you guys have any questions on testing or getting an FRN? No, I see heads shaking. If you've got a GMRS license or one of the marine operator licenses, you may already have an FRN. Uh, so if you do, we can, we can deal with that. I'll show you how to look it up. If, if that's a problem, let, let Mark know or let, or let Ken know, and we'll help you find out what your FRN is. Then you don't need to apply for one because you already got one. Uh, the other thing I wanted to cover tonight was the rules. There, we have our own rules in the Federal Code of Federal Regulations, Part 97, 47 CFR 97, is all about us. I encourage you to skim through this uh, or read it. I mean, if you're really, perhaps you have trouble falling asleep, uh, this would be an excellent way to help you fall asleep. It does define the service uh, right from the basis and purpose, uh, right at the very beginning, telling, telling what the purpose of the amateur radio service is. And from that, you can sort of figure out where they're going with the rest of the stuff. But everything you need to know is there. And there are license questions on the uh, uh, rules questions on the test. So I encourage you to at least take a skim through that. Um, the law that covers that, the CFR is, is regulations that have been come up, uh, have been uh, uh, developed by the FCC. The FCC right. is responsible for implementing the law, which is under 47 USC, Title, 40, uh, Title 47 of the US Code. That covers telecommunications. That's, if, if you think reading the regulations is boring, you should read the law, it's even more boring. Uh, but that's where all that stuff comes from. Um, as I said, it, it's worth taking a look through it, particularly the frequency assignments. 
Uh, we, a lot of our bands are shared with other services. Sometimes we're primary on that frequency. Sometimes we're secondary on that frequency, meaning if the, the primary user needs to use the frequency, then they get to use the frequency. And there are others that are shared with services. Uh, 40 meters, for example, is shared with international broadcasters around the world. Uh, and at night, you will hear them. They are, they are not pirates. They are, they are using their assigned frequencies. So there's all kinds of interesting little tidbits in there. And again, I, I encourage you to at least skim through it. Uh, and pick out interesting stuff because there there will be rules on the test, uh, although that's all covered adequately in in your uh, your class materials. I think that's all I really had, so I will entertain any questions, and if not, I will turn it over to Ken.